All right, thank you for joining us. Welcome back to Battle Ready. It's kind of a rainy Saturday night here, which is great because we haven't had any rain for a while. So thank you for being with us. Get your Bibles out. Open up to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to start there tonight, hopefully. Lead us in. I'd like to talk about old shoes. <laughs> now, I love it when she does okay. that because I never know what she's going to say until she says it. I would like to talk about old shoes. So there was a pair of shoes I saw. It, it came out last year, so I've been hanging on to this bit of information for quite some time. <laughs> but there was a pair of shoes that was for sale at Nordstrom's. And it was a, a big, big deal for a while. It was on the news. And they were made to look like... They were old, worn-out shoes. They had holes in them. They had scuffs all over them. They had brown spots and stains. But they were made... I think it was North Shore. They were made... Kind of like grunge fashion to have a really old-looking pair of tennis shoes. So they were like $2,000 for a pair of shoes that looks like you've worn them for 15 years and you need to throw them in a dumpster. $2,000 pair of tennis shoes that look already worn out. Okay, well, I'm out already. They did the same thing. I don't remember which department store this was or which store this was, but this is hoped fashion. This is this is it. This is the height of it. They did the same thing with a pair of jeans, and they on purpose made them to look like you've been scooted across red clay mud. So there's red clay down your legs, but it's not real red clay. It's fake red clay. It's just for pretty. <laughs> Cute. And you had holes and you had patches in them and, and the fr the fringes. I have a pair of jeans that have fringes, but have like the torn up cuffs on the bottom. But they're brand new jeans, but they're made to look old because old is cool. Yay, I'm back in okay. <laughs> Oh, well, that's what I wanted to talk about. You're not. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Because actual old. <laughs> not you. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> actual old is not so cool. So if it actually is old, it's not cool. It but if it's fake old, it is cool. Keep, stay with me. Okay. Because in our world, what we value is appearance. It's all about how it seems to be. But very, very little about what it actually is. Right? I don't know if you know this, but all the young people are buying albums again. I know. And they will swear to you that an album sounds better than digital music on your phone. Sounds better than your CD, which you don't even have CDs anymore. It sounds better than all the, your Pandora. If you go get an album, it sound, sounds better. That's the rage right now. But they're not old albums. They're new albums. They're new they're albums, albums, right? They're new albums, and, and they're buying record players. This is a thing. But we don't want the old record player. We want the new old record player. <laughs> And <laughs> we want the new old records. Okay. Well, all right. Now, why am I saying all this? I'm saying this is human nature. This is what human beings do. What we ought to value are it's things that actually are old because they stood the test of time, mm -hmm. right? And they earned their place, mm -hmm. whether we're talking about jeans or tennis shoes. I mean, I have jeans that I've had probably, I have a pair of jeans in my closet that I've probably had close to 20 years. And I love them. Mm -hmm. And my kids say, please don't wear them outside, right? They don't like the way they look, but I love, they have a value because they stood up, mm -hmm. right? And yes, stay with me. I'm staying with you. All right. So when I read this story in Matthew 21 about the way Jesus chooses to enter into Jerusalem, going toward the crucifixion, what strikes me is I don't want him to do it this way. Mm-hmm. You want him to be new. I want him to have a the publicity best. agent. Mm -hmm. I want him to have somebody to go in front of him and say, you've never heard anything like this before. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This is brand new. This is amazing. This is real. That is true. But Jesus chooses reality and value over appearance. Right? Mm -hmm. And show. And he does something that we're not willing to do as human beings. Like he, We'll call something old. When it really is old, we want it done away with. But we'll like the image of a thing better than the thing itself, if that makes sense. I don't want to ramble, but is, am I making my yes, point? Yes, I, I hear you. We okay. like what we think it is rather than what it really is. So when I was little, you come to church on Palm Sunday, right? And sometimes the church would be decorated mm -hmm. with like lilies and palm fronds and fronds. That's like the week mm -hmm. before Easter, right? Mm -hmm. And you come in and we would call it in the Bible, even in my Bible and in other Bibles, it's called the triumphal entry. entry. Mm -hmm. 
I can't think of anything. Let's try. Let's triumphal. Right. What this is. Yes. And let's talk about how beautiful it was. Mm -hmm. I think it was embarrassing. Not mm -hmm. for me, for him. This is Jesus humbling himself. This is your king. This is my king. That we're waiting on. Who is showing them a piece of what he is that they don't this understand. This is my king who can ride the clouds. Mm -hmm. Who created the cosmos. Who sits on thrones and his footstool is the earth. Mm -hmm. And he chooses to enter mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Right? With everything stripped away. And it's just him. Mm -hmm. And actually in this first section... Way back here when he asked, who do men say that mm -hmm. I am? The multitude answers who they think he is. They do three times, I think I counted, that I wrote down in this chapter. Say who he is, and they don't say the right thing. They don't say the right thing. <laughs> they don't say the right thing. That's not what they were looking for. That's not what, yep, that's, they are. that's not what they're looking for. But how many times in our lives does God send us what we need, but it's not what we're looking for? Mm-hmm. Right? So Well, not just not that we're we are so blinded and ignorant mm -hmm. we don't know what we need. That's true. We have no clue and what we reality proved, we is. We have proved that by some of the parables prior to this, right? Mm -hmm. He he blessed Who's the greatest? Here's this child. This mm -hmm. humble This child. isn't the one we think should be the greatest. Right. He, let me show you what's great, washing feet. Mm -hmm. Let me show right every time he tells you what is real. It rocks your reality. He's, but mm -hmm. I don't mean, please don't think I think I was embarrassed of Jesus coming to Jerusalem. I mean, I felt like he took the embarrassment of coming in that way. You've got to remember who he is. Mm -hmm. They don't know who he is. He's in disguise. They don't understand. But if him. you know who he is, think about what he did here and how willing he was to be lowly. Mm -hmm. And let's, right. let's, let's start. We're in Matthew chapter 21. We're going to start at verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples. Now remember, we just had prior to this the accounts of the two blind men that got their sight, the accounts of uh, can my son sit beside you in your kingdom? Who's great? Who's great? Uh, verse 2, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Give me the impression about that, about the, him just telling them to do that, and it'll be okay. Just answer it. Do you feel like what was your reaction? But it kind of worked both ends of the story, even though we don't know the other part. I wrote down arrangements have been made. Mm -hmm. I I agree. He's, right? he's worked that out already. However, that was mm -hmm. and or whatever. I have no he did. idea. And, right? and it, the Bible doesn't tell us. Mm -hmm. But he's like, this has already been. I've, this in, that, in other words, I think what this the, those verses tell me mm -hmm. is that the whole riding a donkey into Jerusalem was his choice. Mm -hmm. Wasn't just thought of at the last minute. Mm -mm. Is a it's prophecy. Prepared ahead right? of time. Is a prophecy. Right. So and yes. it's prepared ahead of time. It's not just this is what. And happened. we always think that he only works with what he tells us, right? Mm -hmm. But he's working both sides of everything all the time. Mm -hmm. It can be everywhere at once, right? Mm -hmm. Verse four. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, "Tell ye the daughter of Zion." Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. I've heard I've heard preachers say this was the Mercedes of the day. This donkey was like, this was the coolest thing to be riding. No, it wasn't. No, it was It was a donkey. <laughs> the Romans had horses. They had, right. yeah, um, Lots had, of cultures. At this time in, in culture, in Carthage, we have war elephants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, we, right. we have choices here yeah. about how you choose to appear. Yeah. And not, not only is this a donkey, it's this small one. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This is a young one. Mm -hmm. There's something in the fact that he chose a... 
Sorry, you need to right. one of your tissues. He chose a not significant ride into town. First of all, he hasn't ridden anywhere that we know of. The whole time he's been going, he's been going on foot with his disciples. Say why, why all of a sudden do you need to be mm-hmm. on an animal to go to Jerusalem? I'm going to go really slow, but I was thinking That's a lot fine. about this today. Why all of a sudden do we need to ride into town? We haven't ridden into any other town. Mm-mm. What's going on? Mm -hmm. One, like you said, the prophecy says that's exactly what it'll do. And that prophecy in Jeremiah says, is it Jeremiah? Isaiah, I think. Is it I thought it was Jeremiah. But it, and no, Zachariah. I can't remember. Let me look. I can't remember. Go ahead, though. I didn't write down. But when he does that prophecy, he's again saying, this is who you're looking for. Right, that there's an element to that, but that prophet doesn't brag that this is a wonderful thing he's doing. He says he's lowly mm-hmm. coming in on it. He's mm-hmm. lowly. He's brought himself down. Jesus, Jesus is not choosing to be anything but pure substance. Mm-hmm. Right? No show. No show. Pure substance. And it's and and it's not what they think. They want the king to come. Right? They mm-hmm. think this is the king. I wonder how many people watch him do this and go, is that all he's going to do? Is that it? Is that what he's going to How many people during the time, that because he doesn't immediately go and become be crucified. He's there. There's things that happen in the temple, right? Where he kicks up. To, there's the cursing of the fig tree. There's the, all these things that happen. He doesn't go immediately to the cross, right, this mm-hmm. second. Mm-hmm. How many people are watching going, that's not what I thought the king would do. That's not, what, That's not what I thought he would say. That's not the way this is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. He, he's riding on a young donkey. What's he doing there? Mm-hmm. On the colt. Mm-hmm. Have you ever... Um, I, I'll come back to that. But just keep going. I, I can't remember. I thought it was Jeremiah, but I might be wrong. And it might be, but hang on. Let's here. see what it says in the... I think it actually says it in oh, the verse, doesn't it? I'm not seeing it, though. That's what's making me... Because normally... It which might be there. fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Saying, just as the prophet saying. And when I look at that, though, I go to Exodus and Second Timothy, but and it says Jeremiah seven eleven. Jeremiah right. seven eleven. Yeah. Okay. That's good. okay. All right. Sorry. That's okay. I was thinking it was Isaiah. Going. It's also Zechariah. 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 Okay. Nine. All right. Zechariah. What? Nine nine. Nine nine. There you okay. go. That's what. Okay. That's what you're thinking of. Mm-hmm. All right. That's okay. Um, okay. We're at verse 7. No, we said, and brought the ass and the cold and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very, verse 8, a very great Not mul- a fancy saddle. No, just their coats or just whatever the they had. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. That's why I ask you, Liv, what's his enemy? You deliver us. Deliver us. What are they asking him to do? Okay, so it feels, okay, one, he's not on a grand animal riding into town. He's not on the white horse he's in in no, Revelation. He is not. He's not putting on a grand show. He's all that he is. Mm-hmm. He is the king without having to prove it to you. Mm-hmm. Right? Just and then through. it feels like their reaction to this is impromptu. It's not been planned. Right? They're throwing clothes. They're, throw, they're cutting down branches. They're throwing things in the way for him to walk on. And they're yelling out, Hosanna, deliver us. What? Deliver us from who? Rome. Mm-hmm. Hosanna deliver us. the son of David. Bless Finally, you. there's a king that's going to deliver. Deliver us means... Get us out from underneath this bondage. Get us out from underneath this. Those that want Rome gone and want self-rule are saying, the king's here. Mm-hmm. But some people are looking at him going, I guarantee you. Because the Bible says you cannot look on him and see anything that would make you he desire him. No. He, right. he's, he doesn't walk around the golden halo. He doesn't halo. look special. He he's riding special. on a donkey. Mm-hmm. They didn't. There's no big if elaborate he, train. If he'd have had a gold, golden halo or something that was outstanding, they might have. Thought it would look, but he doesn't. At the risk of sounding completely ridiculous, and please forgive me, but if you guys have ever seen Disney's Aladdin. Oh, yeah. Right? And they're like, here comes Prince Ali, Mm -hmm. and there's elephants and tributes and a parade, and all all these magicians Mm -hmm. and acrobats and all these things. That's how you think the king that's going to deliver us ought to come. Mm -hmm. But here they are yelling, Hosanna, deliver us, deliver. And he's coming meek and lowly and on a young donkey. He's not wearing a crown or a halo. He's not wearing fancy clothes. He's just coming just as he is. Mm-hmm. I wonder how he felt 
hearing those hosannas, right? And knowing that those, some of those same voices, right? Some of those same people, when he doesn't do it the way they want him to do it, when he shocks their expectations, expectations are so strange, mm -hmm. right? You can build something up in your mind that you completely made up That's true. about the way things ought to go. And then the way they really go will rock your world. But as a believer, the way they really go is the way God has designed them to go. And it's for our good and for his glory. And it is right even when it feels like it's completely out of control. Every bit of this to me, if I'm a disciple, especially if I'm Judas, mm -hmm. I feel like just is not the way we ought to do that. Mm -hmm. You ought to, right. You're, you're, do, not do you know what I mean? you're not going to win him over without the flash and the Judas spark. is like, I'm expecting him to be a king. Mm -hmm. This is not how a king behaves. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And not, he is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hosanna to the son of David. What does the crowd say? He's coming in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed mm -hmm. is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Mm -hmm. And their answer, And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet. the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. He's a prophet. That's who they say you are. Right? That's when, right? When she's referring back a couple chapters. Jesus said, Peter, who do they say that I am? Some, some say, say you're, you're John the Baptist. Some say, some say you're a prophet. Come from, who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. Thou art the Son of God, right? The Son Christ, of the living son of God. The living God. But, but who do they think? He's a prophet. So, he's good. I'm glad he's here. And he's a deliverer. And he's going to. He should politi he, he should says save us king, from Rome. Right? He's right through. Right? We're trying to let him know that. We have some expectations of him. So how many people do you think <laughs> sitting in church tomorrow morning think of Jesus as a prophet? In other words, these words are good. He says things that God would have him to say. Or how many people sitting in church tomorrow think he's a deliverer? I'm here because he can fix my problems. He'll make my life go the way I want it to go mm -hmm. if I pray. How many people are still calling out in the crowd just asking, it's nothing Nothing wrong with asking God to deliver you, but he is more than that. He's more than deliverer and he's more than prophet. So I think right? we've talked about this before. So on then you're, you're kind of saying your take on this is we make this such a great day. They thought they were doing great. And I don't think this is a, I've never I don't think this, this is a great, great day. day. I mean, I, 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 I think, think the people in the street think they're making it great. I think it's worth I remembering. I think Jesus is embarrassed. I think it's worth I mean, remembering. It doesn't say that. That's me. But I think it's worth remembering. Here's when he enters the city. It's kind of like here is the start of what he actually is here to accomplish. There, and he's told him he's going to die. And, there's and, a, and he's it. told it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And this is the self-sacrificial part. This is the... Because you know what? If he wanted he, to... he It was obedient to the cross. He could snap his the fingers shame, or even the death of the cross, say right? the word... And it would all be gone, right? I mean, he could do anything he wants to. Here. He who thought it was not robbery to be equal with God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Coming down and, and letting this parade, this sad parade. Are you with me? It is kind of a sad this parade. This sad parade, not because the people didn't want him or like him or what they want and is what it? they need are two completely different mm -hmm. things. What they value and what is valuable are completely different things. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking about the king of the world. They can't, how would they? They're only thinking about someone to get them out from Rome. But shame on us if we still think that way. They don't know. But or Christians in know. church tomorrow know who he is and what he is and what he brought. And it wasn't just your way. It wasn't just deliver us. Fix, mm -hmm. fix everything. It was, they should have said, holy. That's how they did it in heaven when he came back. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they're still saying it right now. Holy, holy, holy. 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 The Lord God Almighty, who was and is, is and, is, and is to come. They never stop. They just say that. Oh, imagine them listening to this praise, which they don't say, but please stay with, please do what I want. Mm -hmm. Please, Jesus, work for us. I've Deliver seen, us. I've seen some of the things you can do. Right? So. Deliver us. Mm -hmm. this, they're, they're going back to Jeremiah. They're going back to Zechariah. They're going back to his prophecies. 
They think he's the one God sent, but they think God sent them to do what they think needs to be done. And Jesus walking in this, this it feels like a parade. I don't mean to belittle it by saying that. Mm -hmm. Allowing them to see what the king is mm -hmm. with no glitter. Mm -hmm. or, does that make sense? Yes, it does. And is this where he says, I'm um, not... This breaks my heart. It, it kind of does mine too. When, when he comes into Jerusalem and all of them, even his own Disciples. 12, mm -hmm. miss it. Mm -hmm. That breaks my heart. And that he, this is the part to me where he starts being that lamb led to the slaughter. He doesn't open his mouth. He allows it. Mm -hmm. He takes the praise for what limited understanding it is because he still deserves all praise and all glory. But so much more than we gave him. And you know what? I'm going, so to, much more. I'm going to go over here and jump way ahead into way more stuff. But what that reminds me of is in the book of Revelation, John says he weeps mm -hmm. because there's no one to open that scroll. No right? one worthy. That, that, that scroll should be opened by someone, right? right. Someone's going to, uh -huh. and, they, and they said there's no one in heaven, in heaven or yeah. on the earth or below uh -huh. the earth. And what's he see? A lamb. A lamb. That, That's what you see. He sees a lamb. And that's what the triumphal mm -hmm. entry looks like. Mm -hmm. It's a lamb. But then that's not what, what does a lamb That's not what you're told in, a lamb in, in popular culture, anything, right? right? No. It popular culture makes it like a great, big, it wasn't. Was but then it was the opposite then, But then the look show. at this though. So staying over here. Sorry, I'm going way over here. But the other piece of that is, is how does it portray Satan? In the book of Revelation, he's this great red dragon. Uh -huh. He's this great big thing. Mm -hmm. But the, but the, the guy that can open the scroll, the only the one. guy who's worthy, is a lamb. and the one who has, who looks slaughtered but's alive, who has eyes and can see everything, and who had that guy's a, a lamb, an obedient, mm -hmm. tender lamb. Quiet. To, yeah, quiet. They're yelling, Hosanna. They're, they're yelling out praise. He, it's not wrong that they are. They should be praising. Mm -hmm. But he's quiet. And he's mm -hmm. humbled. We are, and we don't... If he's a prophet, that's what I want to say. This is what I'm trying to say. If he is a prophet, this is a great parade. Mm -hmm. What an honor. But this if honor, he's God... This is not a great honor. This is a humiliation. and This is a humble... This is one more time right? that he is set aside... What he left and what he is. He like the should rich have ruler, struck right? them all dead. Like the rich, <laughs> yeah, right like the rich and your ruler. He said, get rid of everything he got. Right. Because he got he rid of everything him. he had to do this. On this this silly little donkey. On this silly little street. In a silly little place. That's not even important in the world. Rome is, not Jerusalem. Right? Mm -hmm. To the world. It will be someday. It will be someday. But to the world right now, it ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. And these people putting their clothes, their dirty clothes, on the them. ground when he was used to walking on gold. Mm -hmm. Their palm leaves and their, their less than praise when he's used to the praise of angels. An innumerable amount. This makes my heart sad. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not the best we had. <laughs> but this is what he got. And have, excuse me, and haven't we said that a lot about a lot this of things lately? Is can. this the best we can do? Is this the best we can Well, got? what really makes me sad is that we still do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We still devalue the king. Mm -hmm. We because because so let me say it again a different way what you're I think you're trying to say we devalue the king because if he's not doing what we think he should do or if his rules mm -hmm. are something we don't want to do or if we his word offends us or if he says something and that's just not the same I don't want to mm -hmm. I don't want to be then we, we're we throwing a dirty shirt on the ground. They're calling him old today. Mm -hmm. That doesn't apply today. He needs to be updated today. He needs to be changed. He needs to be new old clothes. Mm -hmm. But Jesus will never be new old clothes. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is valuable. He is rare. The only one. Mm -hmm. Perfection the itself. Only one worthy. Doesn't have to justify himself. Doesn't have to prove himself. Doesn't have to impress you. Mm -mm. Because he doesn't need you to feel validated. No, because he's the God who made he it all. He is worthy because he created he it all. Right? He created it all. And yet all and the worthiness the cross for us all. He let go.
to do what we needed done. He's a man on a mission on that donkey coming into Jerusalem. But it, I, I just think it's so such a weird day. <laughs> do you think it's a weird it's day? It's been a weird day. It's yes. a weird day when Jesus rides into Jerusalem on that donkey. All that was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and meek. a colt, the foal of an ass. What's meek? Un He's not fighting with a sword here. Everybody hears meek. Here's the word meek. Thanks, weak. It is the not exact weak. opposite. That's meek strong. is all the strength under control. Mm -hmm. Jesus has every, he's still God, but all of that contained in quiet and coming into town, letting them do what they're doing. And knowing what he knows is going hmm. to happen, hearing what they're saying and not straightening them out and not correcting them. And yet, and not saying you all are not saying. worth it. You only want what you want. Which right? we would have done, mm -hmm. right? How many times do we? Uh, we, I, we you guys have missed the whole. Point. We talked. To, we talked about that earlier before we started this about how situations in our own life we're ready to take care. Here's yeah. what we're going to do now. We're going to fix this situation, and then, right? Mm -hmm. And here he is going. Whether you get it, I wonder sometimes how many times he said. Now this is me. This is not in scripture, so please don't say Debbie said. But sometimes I wonder how many times he said in his heart of hearts, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them, Father, they haven't got it yet. They don't get it. I feel it. like I, it's true. And I feel like this is an exchange moment. This is, this is a his life for mine moment. This is the picture of Jesus exchanging the glory he deserves. To be us. To be one of us. Mm-hmm. Because the sacrifice has to be from my <laughs> right? Yes. This is an exchange going on right here. I agree with that. So, so let's go to the next section. So here we go. This very meek guy, right? The one who's strength always, control, always portrayed quiet, as weak. Not weak. And um, sometimes effeminate, just very weak and mealy mouth and, you know, just lets people hurt him. Mm -hmm. Verse 12 says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast all them... Cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. I think a lot of people don't put 13 and 14 together. You have to put 13 and 13 together. 13 are... See, we think that the so blind and the lame are one kind of person, and the people that work in the temple are another kind of person. But the blind and the lame are the people who work in the temple, as well as the blind and the lame that are physically blind and lame. Mm -hmm. So Jesus comes in, and they are using God mm -hmm. to profit financially themselves. They are mm -hmm. keeping people from coming to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And all that Jesus came to do was to remove every impediment, everything, that gets between God and man. Mm -hmm. So how fitting that you flip that table. You flip, I guess. How flip, fitting that you chase out those who would separate you, put another degree of separation between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. I think we should be flipping tables all over this country. I think we should. Where people too. have put themselves in between whether or not you're going to heaven, in between whether or not you can get to God. When Jesus said, that's why I came. When you create rules right? that keep people I out instead of putting them in. So the healing that he starts to do right there. You know what? The healing begins with, let's knock out the separation. We're getting so, ready to block it out. So this pitiful parade is, I think that's how you I don't say know it. how to, I don't know. This I need to be offensive with that. I hear people probably thinking that's wrong. The pitiful, what I mean is if you're used to what Jesus is used to, it's a pitiful, that's pitiful. Or, but then this, as this parade comes to the end, it comes to the temple. Mm -hmm. And at the temple, he says, enough of that. Enough of that. We ain't doing this anymore. My words, we're not, I was my West Virginia. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing this anymore. My house shall be called the house of prayer. They want him to deliver them from Rome, but they need delivered from themselves. Yes. 
They need delivered from yes. who they have become. And God, for, God help us. I need delivered Sometimes from myself. Sometimes we get in our own way and we need delivered from myself. I ourselves. need delivered from myself. Mm-hmm. I need that. Because get, turn my table over. Right where I have caused myself grief and separation from God. And I've clung to things that are lesser. And I put up rules that don't need to be there. Or in my heart of hearts, I've thought of something and I won't let that go. I have to, I have to pursue that. Because you value it. Like they did that money. Like they did, right. Right. And, and they're cheating them. We all, we've all heard those stories. And cheating themselves. And cheating themselves. Because they've, they've made what was a wonderful thing, a place to meet with God, into something that's just a financial gain. Mm -hmm. They've made it into a mercenary enterprise Mm -hmm. and separated themselves from God by this sin. Jesus, I like the way you said it. Enough. 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 It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed. Why is that significant? It's significant because even in that state, if they turn to him, he does something for them. That's true. Even more, they're not allowed in there. Right. The blind and blind and lame aren't allowed to come in the temple. But when Jesus is in the temple, the blind and the lame are in the temple. Exactly. It doesn't say they were outside the temple where the beggars were. Now you want to back up and say something about that because in the temple setting, inside the the walls of the temple. There was a degree of perfection that represented what Christ would be when he enters Correct. the temple. Correct. But guess when the imperfect get to come in? When he's in the house. When he's in there. When the, when perfect has come, then the imperfect in. go inside. Mm-hmm. That's and right. the Pharisees freak out. They do. And this is what it says right? in verse 15. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and they were so happy, right? <laughs> they were so happy that Wait, he was healing they can't be the one. There? When the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to, to the, the son, son of David. David. Son of David means Messiah. We're getting closer, right? They said son of David, son of David. Mm-hmm. Not, that's more than a problem. What were the chief priests and scribes? Who are the chief priests and scribes? Still not enough. It's chief priests and scribes, the, the ones that are taking the leap, but the ones that are supposed to be taking care of it, and the scribes, the one who are writing down and study the law and, and do all these wonderful things, they were sore displeased. Mm-hmm. They weren't just and upset. And they go to Jesus and they're like, you need really. to make them stop. Mm-hmm. They can't say that in here. And he and said unto him, the priests and scribes say to Jesus, do you hear what they're saying? Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto him, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? You know who that makes me think of? Faith. Faith. <laughs> when, when I was a teenager, we used to go pick up a lady who lived in town named Faye Goody. I mm-hmm. hope somebody knows her because this is a good story about it. But I, I can remember that she would get excited about God and she would raise her hand and she would... Shout praises to God. She would praise the Lord. And I remember her telling us one time that she went to a church in our town. And they were, I don't know what they were doing. They were having a church service and she felt that. And she stood and she praised God. And they came to her afterwards and they said, now now you can come back, but you can't ever do that again. You can't ever do that again. And I'm like, those Pharisees, that's what they're doing. You need to make them be quiet. They cannot call you the Messiah in this building. Mm Mm-hmm. You need to tell them to stop. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is like, don't you understand? That's perfect. That's well, the, the fact that they're calling me the Messiah, that's right. Not that the they're praise, doing that. Not the praise and the parade. It's not, it's not the praise that is only what you're going to do for me. But that praise that is sincerely recognizing him as the one sent by God. They, I don't think they still get that he's God. Mm-hmm. I still don't think that they know all the way what he's going to do. I don't. I don't think they've seen the resurrection and realized that he is God himself. But I think we're getting closer. He said, don't, haven't you read another prophet out of the mouth of babes and sucklings? I think that's David who said that. Thou hast perfected praise. God, we're getting closer and there's no way Jesus is going to let them not say that in his presence. But have you, but did you notice? And if you haven't, Maybe this is maybe a moot point. Maybe we've already said it already. But in my to my attention, that's one of the same phrases that the pitiful parade said. Hosanna to the son of David. And then over here, Hosanna to the son of David. You can say the right words, so, but you need to mean 
what the meaning can be completely different. Here's the thing, though. It's not a matter of, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not a matter of just learning the words to say. It's where's your heart in this? Since God gave Moses the, the law concerning the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and all, thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lambs slain in that temple and offered mm -hmm. for a sacrifice, mm -hmm. looking forward to the one God is going to send, mm -hmm. right? Who is the son of David, who is the deliverer. He is the son of David. So the take deliverer. a minute. He is a prophet of God. God. If someone's listening to us and have never been in church, and have never read much in the Old Testament. What they do know the is it's a kind Old of Testament. a bloody thing. And ugh, the entire Old that? Testament is a, a foreshadowing. You're looking forward to the one who will come and actually be able. You know where it starts? Genesis 3.15. Mm -hmm. It starts at, at that right after they sin in the garden. And they're told that there's one coming. And he's going to bruise his, he's going to crush his head, but he'll. Bruce his heel, mm -hmm. right? He's going to be the one that's going to take care of this sin problem, mm -hmm. this curse that's on us mm -hmm. because of our sin, because of and our then separation. He goes to Moses and he, he tells him exactly the entire what to do. Old Testament is a picture after a picture after a picture after at this moment, him walking into that temple, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and the pray, this is the Messiah, this is the one, and they're angry. And he has to the leave people the people that should know. The temple are should angry. be the place where the king is recognized. Mm -hmm. And the king leaves and goes to Bethany. Verse 17. He goes outside. Verse 17. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany. Which and is he exactly lodged what there. he did. Mm -hmm. And then we have we have God cannot be held in temples made with hands. Mm -hmm. Solomon said that. God <laughs> said that to Solomon. We're in a contest right. now. I just, Solomon said, he said, you know. When I, God had him build the temple, he said, I want you to understand, Solomon. <laughs> this can't hold me. This, right. this can't hold me. So, but it can't. And this can't hold him today. No. And the fact that he presented himself and they did not recognize it, he walked away. He walked mm -hmm. out. He didn't he didn't fuss. Because just like on that animal, he has nothing to prove to you. Mm -hmm. If you don't know him, and I'm gonna show you in a minute, a verse that says they did know. Mm -hmm. but, it, but if you don't know and you don't recognize and you don't praise. He'll allow you to make that choice. choice. Yeah. There is always a choice. You're allowed to make that choice. So let's go to the next one, which is a barren fig tree in my scripture. That's how it's got it highlighted. Mm -hmm. Remember sometimes, though, when you're studying scripture, all connected. these divisions are only for People us divisions. to be able to find things in all. The real barren fig tree were those high priests. Which is and why. And priests and scribes. That's what, what the tree's about. Which I, which I think is what. He's mm -hmm. getting ready to say, okay. That's what Matthew is saying. You had your choice. Now I'm going to show you mm -hmm. what's going to happen next. Right. So verse 18 says, Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw, and it's talking about Jesus, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow you know on me henceforth forever. He found a he tree. He found new fake tennis shoes. <laughs> I swear he did, because this is the time when he looked at that tree that that tree should have had fruit, but it just looks like it has fruit. That's the chief priests and the scribes in the temple. That's the people that are in charge. They look so holy. They're wearing the holy robes. They're in the holy place. And God, they're doing all the things. And he, but he just found out there's not a piece of fruit on there. There's no fruit. There's no bearing of what God would have you to bear. What fruit should we have in that place? Love and joy and peace, peace and long suffering, <laughs> meekness and gentleness kindness. and self control. Temperance. All those things. The fruits of the spirit. He goes to that tree. They, this, they are the tree. Now, before you get confused, you look he's good. talking about a real fig tree here, but he's not finding what he should be finding on the so fig tree. Compare. Just put that in your mind. Put two pictures in your mind. Jesus in his regular clothes on a donkey. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees, not Pharisees, the chief priests in their beautiful robes mm -hmm. in their Golden place. This is, they call it Herod's temple. Newly rebuilt. Everybody's proud. Even the disciples are like, Jesus, would you like to see our magnificent temple? Mm -hmm. Right? Let's go take That's a look at the what, temple. 56 years to build right? they, 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 They're so proud of this. They look like they'd have fruit. They look holy. They look holy. They look righteous. They but you know what? Like if you're hungry, you stay hungry. And then hungry. you have Jesus who doesn't look like they expect him to. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you and if you and if you drink of this water and you eat of this bread and if you believe it's well, eternal, you, it's right? forever. I'll heal you and right? I'll make you substance. 
versus appearance. Mm -hmm. Reality, right? Right. Which is... Versus show. Which is someone said today, I, I don't know where, I don't remember who said it to me. I don't know whether it was Kate or I don't remember who said it. I don't remember if I read it. I'm not sure. But it was the church has got to the place where we're a nice club. It's good to say we believe in God. And You're leafy. You're, it, it's good really? to look like we're a nice tree and we're well, a nice fruit. But where is that fruit? And the fruit that we're supposed to be showing needs to be there mm -hmm. because when he requires it, he requires it, right? He's requiring, he's hungry. He's looking for something to eat. And he says, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, truly, I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to a fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Now, we have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Because I, I can't be... Um, the kinds of things that are not in his will, right? It can't be thing. I don't know. Sometimes I think we can ask. <laughs> we can ask for anything, but don't start. Don't start putting conditions on. No, what he says. I'm thinking we can ask for anything, but his answer may be no to that. See it in the light of the fig tree, and that's and there is always the place. And I and I'll let you go. It's on not that. separate. I'll say, I want to say that in this way. If it's not in context, you can't make something out of it that it's not. Just just a little while after this, Jesus is going to be nailed to a cross. I wonder how many of the disciples prayed that wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. God, rest me. That's our friend. You can't let that Stop happen. Stop this. Him. You can't let this happen. I wonder how many people said, just a little while after he's risen again, he's going to send them out to preach the gospel. And there's going to be mountains like... Mm -hmm. The, the ruling Wait. class in Jerusalem. Mountains the like Emperor. the Roman Empire. Mountains like Thomas gets all the way to China and it, before he's crucified after spreading the gospel and the gospel is, grows and is planted there. They, they're going to go all over the world and, and face mountain after mountain after mountain after mountain. He said, I'm showing you power over a worthless tree. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go to spread the gospel, you're going to find lots of leaves no fruit. Mm -hmm. But he said, if you think it's something that the tree withered, wait till you see what the kingdom of God what you is going to do. do. Mm -hmm. What they're asking is not, Lord, give me a million dollars. Lord, give me uh, a that's, mansion on a hilltop. That's kind of the point. What, what they're asking, what they're going to be asking is, Lord, help me spread the gospel. Lord, help me get the word out. Because they're going to be changed. Their wants are going to be. I said this all the time. I can have anything I want because God changed what I want. Mm -hmm. If what I want is in his will, I can have it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right? And I can ask. And I'm not limiting what Jesus said he can do. I'm saying he means it. Mm -hmm. But what he's I saying is don't be afraid of those fig trees and those mountains. And those they're going to seem so huge that it stop this from being the truth. But guess what? They're just, a, they, they're, they're, they don't have any fruit. You shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Right? Mm -hmm. I believe you can ask in faith believing Jesus Christ. I believe when when you are aligned with him, hey, start with the tables. When the tables have been turned over, the separation has been removed. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. You're not. The God who takes care of blind eyes and blind hearts and lame hearts and things that, that need to get out of the way. And we, the God who turns me inside out, mm -hmm. flips the tables of my desires, mm -hmm. the God who has... Looks who for is fruit. angry at appearance yes, he that is. has no substance. And yet we have the appearance of right? a pitiful parade. So I'm not pretending to follow Christ. Right? I'm following Christ. I'm part of the body of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That person, start at the beginning of the chapter, can ask what he will mm -hmm. in faith believing. He can trust and be sure that when God answers, he answers right and he hears God that takes prayer. care of us. Right, yes, they, they don't have to even hesitate. That God is God. Does God hear me? Does He see me? Does He care what I'm going through? Is He these people that He's talking to and saying you can ask anything you want died for Him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So evidently, mm -hmm. 
that wasn't what they wanted. They wanted to be a light for Christ. They wanted to be with him forever in heaven. They, they wanted to do what he wanted them to do. That's why it's all together. It's not separate. But he's also he's also referencing right back to what you said earlier in that temple. Those people who were saying they can't call you Messiah. Oh yes, they, they can. can't do this. Where are their fruits? Right. Where are their where fruits? are their fruit? Because when he heals, it says, "And the blind and the lame came to him mm-hmm. in the temple, and he healed them." I'm always amazed that in the scripture stories, when these things happen, when the guy with the withered hand is healed, mm-hmm. they don't get happy that this is their friend and mm-hmm. he's somebody that's now healed. Mm-hmm. They immediately are angry. They're all upset and tore up about their their fruit isn't, there's no fruit there, right? The love, the kind, the gentleness, the peace, the long-suffering, all those things, that meekness that are supposed to be there. There's a Latin term. And it's a legal term. We use it in America in law. It's called a fortiori. An a fortiori argument means an argument from strength. And the way you make that argument, I talked about this Friday to Emma's class. The way you make that argument is that you show a lesser example. And then you follow it up with, now that's true. How much more (laughs) is this true? Jesus said, "If, if I... We'll get rid of this fig tree because it doesn't bear fruit. How much more will I break down the kingdoms of this earth that don't bear fruit? Mm -hmm. Right? And the gospel will prevail. And it does. And it did. Mm -hmm. And it does. Right? It did. Mm -hmm. It stood up to the kingdoms of the world. Turned the world upside down. Mm -hmm. Changed all of time. All of date. all, All of everything. Yeah. Right? And, we, and everybody forgets he, that. Who's this Jesus who changed the entire world? And he's the God people, who said right here. And these disciples that it don't set them out, they turn the ups, they turned the whole world upside down. Right. Right? They changed everything. An argument from strength. I'm showing you this. How much more? Mm-hmm. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit after the resurrection, are you going to turn over? So I think we have about four minutes left. <laughs> but, sorry. But my, no, don't be sorry. My question then is, if someone's hearing this, these these particular accounts in Matthew for the first time, and they have not heard about the triumphant, what's called the triumphant infantry or Palm Sunday, um, in of chapter twenty one, and they haven't ter- heard, or maybe they have heard about Jesus overthrowing the temple. I know I've heard a few people joke. Well, even Jesus got mad and threw over. You know, he got, he was. Right. Angry, he is so righteously nice. angry. Mm-hmm. And he still is. And well, the Bible says he's angry at sin every day. Why? It separates you. It, it gets in the right. way between you and God. And I've heard people say, so they may not always know the whole picture of that story, but they at least have heard mm-hmm. about that. And now we have a barren fig tree that he simply withers. It's kind of like he's shutting the door a little bit mm-hmm. to the old and here's coming the new. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody but me, but it feels like, I've tried. I'm showing you. You refuse. You're not listening. I'm moving on with the plan. It's Pinocchio. <laughs> I thought it was done. <laughs> it's Pinocchio. <laughs> it's it's you're done being a puppet. Here's the real boy. Here's the real thing. We're done playing. <laughs> Stop. You're playing at this thing. And you're and you're getting in the way. God is giving you the real deal. Here he is. In the flesh. Come and know him. Come and praise him. Come and love him. (laughs) No more separation. No more gain. No more show. This is real. This is not appearance. This This is reality. This is not, yes. This is not fake. And he doesn't need any glitter to prove it. No. Because he is who he is. His word is true. When he speaks to the fig tree, things happen. Because he doesn't put on. He's not pretending to be God. He He is is God. God. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? And this little meek fellow riding in on the colt, right? When he's riding in, mm-hmm. flipped the tables. Didn't have anything to prove to took you. Took care of a tree, right? Withered a tree mm-hmm. just on his word. But doesn't have anything to prove. He doesn't just, to prove. he's doing that because that's who he is. That's what he does. He's coming to do exactly what he said he was coming to do. I, I feel am so thankful. His heavy heart. It makes yeah. my heart heavy. Yes. Right? Because yeah. the cross is ahead of him. And he knows. And my God. Just a hero. He's a hero coming in, okay. not in a dress uniform. He's in combat fatigues. Mm-hmm. He's ready to do battle. 
the way he's right? intended and to And he's do going it. to win. He's going to be obedient to the mm-hmm. Father. And he knows, even though everybody else may be, you know, he's told them, we read just recently, he told them, I'm going to die, they're going to crucify, I'm going to rise on the third day. He's told them that. I don't think they get it. And yet he's going to go right on mm-hmm. and do what it is he's supposed to do. So we're out of time. Thank you for joining us. Do you have anything you want to say in parting? No, I'm sorry. We didn't make it all the way through the chapter. Well, we'll start no, you got to write down. we got to start at verse 33 next. Or 23, not 33, 23. 23. Thank you for joining us. Keep your Bibles open. Read what it says. Learn what it says. Listen to what God says to you when he's talking to you through his word. It's a marvelous privilege to have. And tomorrow when you come to church, I'm not going to say this right, but here's my intent. Okay. Don't be a new old thing. <laughs> tomorrow when you come to church, be an eternal thing. Don't wear jeans that have... Be someone who's got eternal life living like someone with eternal life. Don't fake Don't pretend. a relationship with Christ. Make sure you have one. Flip the table, right? Make Flip sure you the have table one. if you have to. Flip the table. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully we'll be here next Saturday. Um, Lord willing, stay battle ready.